Hey everyone, this video is going to show you an example of how to use formulas to separate data based on some kind of criteria you want to set. This could be from a Google form that you've given, a quiz data question, or maybe it's data you filled in yourself in a sheet. You can take this data and separate it out or filter it out how you want to and populate it into other spreadsheets that you add at the bottom of your Google spreadsheet. Let's say you gave a Google form out and students filled it out and they maybe had grade levels in here and you wanna take this information, but you need it separated by grade level. Normally you could take the filter over here and create a filter view for um, which grade level and look at it that way. What's really nice, if I create a new spreadsheet, this one's a grade eight, this one's grade nine. I can create a formula and separate this out automatically. So as the form responses come in, they will automatically populate to my grade eight, grade nine spreadsheet. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on my tab that says grade eight and look at this new sheet here. And in the first cell, I'm gonna actually just go ahead and type in the formula. I like using the query formula so that I can add any kind of configuration that I want. It's very helpful, very useful. I can even add multiple criteria so that it can filter maybe based on a date range and a specific response. So I'm gonna type in equals query, and then I need the name of where the data is coming from. So the name of that spreadsheet is called database. So I'm going to type in database here, exclamation point, and then I'm going to just take over the entire database. So mine goes from A to J. So if I look back here, I can see that mine goes from A to G, but I have some hidden. So you can see it skips H, I, J. So I know that my spreadsheet goes to J. So I'm actually going to put in here A to J. I'm going to do a comma because that's the spreadsheet I'm pulling from. That's the data range I'm pulling from. And then I'm going to select where G, column G, that's where the grade range is, contains, and since this is eight, I'm gonna say grade eight. So now everybody who's from grade eight is now pulled through. So as you can see, my column that I want is G, so anybody who is eight has now pulled through to my grade eight spreadsheet. And then what I can do is I can actually um, come back up here to my first cell, and I'm just gonna copy this, and I'm gonna go to my grade nine, and I'm going to paste that in there, but I'm gonna take this eight out and make it a nine, and now anybody that's a grade nine has populated through. So the one thing I wanna show you is if I were to add another date on here, say on December 10th, 2020, another entry was put in here. Now that I've done that, this extra entry, I can go back to the grade eight and you see it populated automatically. Now it is missing the data right here because I did not add it in. So let me unhide those columns and I'm gonna put in class period, the assignment, and then the score they got on their quiz. So now if I go back to grade eight, you can see all of that added in here. So if I make any changes, it automatically populates into this grade eight spreadsheet for me. So let's say I sent out a, an assignment submission form to my students. And one of the questions I have on here is class period. So I could actually, when I get this data back and their responses from their assignment back, I could actually put this into a period for spreadsheet or I could filter for any of my class periods here. And of course, just like I did with the separating out for grade eight or nine, I can do the same thing here. So I'm gonna do query database, the name of the spreadsheet I'm pulling from. And again, from a to J, and then I'm going to select where, and I gotta check my class period is H, where H contains four. And so now everybody in period four is now in this spreadsheet. So I have all their assignments right in front of me. So and that can be the same thing with vocabularies. I want just whoever turned in the vocabulary assignments. I want to separate by assignment, maybe not class period. I can come to my vocabulary age and same thing. Query database A to J select and I need to check my assignment column, which is I, where I contains vocab one. All right, so that data did not pull through. So I'm wondering if it's because I did not capitalize my V. There we go. So that capital letter was important. It did actually pull that through. Now here's one I really like with the late work spreadsheet because I get teachers who ask me all the time, I don't really wanna go back in and keep looking to see that somebody submitted an assignment late or somebody submitted their quiz test after the due date. So maybe you have one spreadsheet that is for late work. In order to view these by date, so I can check in on my late work submissions. I'm going to do the equals query and then database 
and then my A through J. Quote, select where A, which is my date column, is greater than, and I'm gonna say uh, maybe October 5th. So where A is greater than the date of October 5th, so anybody who submitted after October 5th, and A is also less than, and maybe I wanna say at the end of a second quarter. So that could have been the date of 2020, December 15th. There we go. Anybody who submitted their assignment after October 5th, but before December 15th, as you can see, everybody that pulled in after that date. So if I put somebody here that is maybe 12, 16, 2020. So I have somebody here that submitted something after December 15th. So if I go back to my late work submission, as you can see, that did not fall in here. That did not populate to this spreadsheet. So I like that once I have all these spreadsheets set up, the data will continue to populate. So if I use the same form every time and they submit a different whatever assignment they're uploading I can separate by assignment I can separate by class period um, what I really like is if I do a quiz I can actually separate by score so the quiz I gave was only two questions so really they could either get zero a 50 or a hundred so any of my students that um, based on score I believe needs an intervention I'm gonna actually add them to this spreadsheet. That's going to be that database exclamation A to J. And I'm going to select where, and here's where I want to show you with a Google form quiz. It populates to the column with like a two out of two or one out of two, but it actually is reading it as a single digit. So whatever their actual score was, the two or the one is their score. And so this is column J. So if I go back to my intervention, so I want to say where J contains a one. So that would be my intervention group for that quiz. So anybody who got a 50% and so all those students who got a one out of two, I'm going to bring them in here. So this makes assigning group work really easy. So if they did this form as soon as they walked in the class, all I have to do is pull up this intervention spreadsheet and I'm ready to go with my groups. And so that's really nice. So I could even put score ranges if I need to. I could use the min max again. So if it was anywhere between a one and a zero or a one and a four or however many questions you had or point values, that would be really nice as well. So I hope using this database with the query formula is helpful. It gives you some different options on to aggregate data and look at data and use some of this information and be able to use it to inform your instruction a lot easier and quicker than trying to sift through and create those filters um, over and over again.